So I'm going to try a little experiment. What I'm going to do is try and predict the move that you see when I flash a position up on the board. So when I flash this position up on the board for five seconds, I'm going to predict the first move that pops into your head, hopefully. Let's have a look. Here is the position coming up in three, two, and one. Okay, was the move that you considered in that position, obviously I had time to fully analyse it, but was the first move that popped into your head this move? This ship takes G4. Was it? I don't know. Hopefully. Right, so my point is this. So if you're anything like me, you probably spend a lot of time drilling tactics, going over tactics, you know, from books or courses or apps or anything like that, and that's a good thing. But... I believe when you're looking at a chessboard and you've been training tactically and doing a lot of tactics, it can cloud the way you kind of view a chess position. So I'm going to show you the position in a minute, but I think this can be a problem actually, and it can lead to, you know, adverse playing effects really. I, I remember in my games trying to find tactical wins too much, like looking at the board and playing the chess game a little bit like it's a tactical puzzle. Right, which is not really good. The objective of training tactics is to improve tactically, but I think there could be a danger in a case for when you're looking at a position, you're trying to force something too much, uh, you're trying to play tactically, you're trying to find moves that, that are not there, or you're trying to make moves work that are not there, right? So you're trying to, you're looking at the same captures, the same checks over and over again. And if this is you when you're playing a game, perhaps you're looking at the position too tactically. So let me bring the position up again. This is a position that I put up at the start of the, the video then. So this is in this position, obviously, you know, I didn't give people long enough to analyze the position. And I, that, I did that on purpose in order to sort of try and capture the first move that comes in your head. So... Bishop takes g4, I think, probably should be the first move you look at, actually. It's not a criticism you know, at all. This is like, I think we trained to look tactically at a position first and then look strategically. So moves bishop g4. If you didn't look at this one, maybe knight d5 was another move. Maybe f5. Uh, maybe something like b5, a4, something like that. I'm edging my bets now, but... I think the first move in the position that certainly jumped out at me was bishop takes g4, knight takes g4, uh, you know, because we're told to look for the, the captures, checks and threats in positions, and I think naturally just do that anyway. And there are no ch checks, there are lots of threats in the position. But the only real capture, bishop takes g4, is not a good it's not a good move in this position, actually, because bishop takes g4, and you can pause the video if you want to, give you that second to do that, okay. It's not a good idea because you bring the knight into the game, and you know hits the bishop so let's try and drop the bishop back but then you've got queen b6 check which is never a good idea and uh, you know gonna lose the exchange in this position uh so that wouldn't be a good idea and obviously even if there wasn't that queen b6 check you know exchanging this bishop drawing in at black's piece is not usually a good idea in the position you know even this uh check wasn't available if we drop the bishop back so and, you know, if you don't drop the bishop back in the position uh, and you just play something, something else, maybe something like this, then you allow black to, you know, trade and get this strong dra dragon bishop in the position. Uh, and, you know, you've got no counterpoint on the dark square. So that's not a good idea either. But so there are many moves playable in this position, actually. It's quite a strategic position. You know, it's not tactical, really, in a strict sense. And, and, and in actual game, Nigel Short playing Anderson in 1990, I believe. I'll have a look later on. Uh, played King H1 in the position and just took, took the king away. But there are many other moves that are playable. You know, A4 does come up quite a lot. And, you know, I do I do think you naturally should consider these sorts of moves. And F5 obviously looks pretty good with the rook behind it. So there are lots of different moves. The point is not really to analyse this position. The point of this video is actually just to sort of, you know, talk about how you look at a chessboard and, and do you kind of strain over time tactically. Sometimes I do, or I did when I was playing, I really tried to force the positions that weren't there. And I think that's a clear sign I was playing too tactically. So some signs might be if you're playing too tactically, you're looking at the board too tactically, might be, you know, you're looking at the variations over and over again. 
you're trying to force something or you're getting short on time or you're getting really frustrated when you can't find that that breakthrough right instead of probably just improving the position right there are some signs that maybe you're looking at the board too tight so if you want to let me know what moves uh, first popped into your head i thought bishop takes g4 but maybe maybe i'm wrong maybe it's something like knight d5 or something else so let me know what you think also let me know what you think of the video if you think that this was useful then yeah give me a thumbs up thank you goodbye